That was Alice, one of CERN LHC experiment in preparation. And they are just looking for one of the mysteries of the universe. You heard about quarks, quark gluon plasma. Well, that leads me into the mystery section of this webcast, which starts now till the end, till midnight. And it's time to reveal the solution of the Apple computer mystery quiz. The first question of this quiz was, we asked 10 physics Nobel Prize winners, what is today's most puzzling and enigmatic mystery of the universe left unsolved by Einstein's theories? Can you tell us what that mystery is? Well, one of the Nobels is telling us, Murray Gelman. One thing that's very mysterious has to do with the expansion of the universe. It's been known for a long time that the clusters of galaxies are receding from one another. That expansion of the universe is accelerating. And the easiest way to describe that acceleration is to make use of the notorious cosmological constant, which many people thought for a long time might be zero. For an elementary particle physicist, it's not at all surprising that there's a non-zero cosmological constant because to us what it means is the energy density of the vacuum. The vacuum in quantum field theory is very complicated. <laughs> it's not just nothing and it has an energy density and there's no known reason why it should really be zero. So uh, it's worthwhile then to make a very crude estimate based on the fundamental physical constants of how big it ought to be. Well, it comes out very, very, very much larger than what seems to be observed. And the ratio is a factor of something like 10 to the 118th, one with 118 zeros after it. By far the largest fudge factor in the history of science. That is a real mystery. To explain this mystery better, I need a physicist, and I would like to have Rolf again on stage, Rolf Landwa, our guest scientist. So Rolf, Murray was uh, mentioning the cosmological constant. Is that the answer to our first question? Well, I think the, the answer to the first question is dark energy. But uh, let me explain a little bit um, why that is a mystery. <clears throat> So first of all, we have to start with what you call the cosmological constant. That was Einstein who invented it. It was because he found out the equations, the basic equations, which determine the structure of our universe, which space and time, how is it curved by the presence of matter. And when he looked at them, he didn't like them very much because they didn't predict a static universe, which he would have liked to have. Uh, he would, li would, like, would have liked the universe to be somehow permanent, eternal. Yeah? And so he invented a little trick, a mathematical trick, which he was allowed, he allowed himself to put into his equations, which led them in a reasonable shape and aesthetically, and that was the cosmological constant. Sort of artificially. Yes, and that was a sort of like an a force which acted against the gravity of all these matter particles which acted sort of pulling together and this repulsive force that allowed to invent a static universe. But then in 1929 um, there was um, Hubble who observed other galaxies and he found out that the further away you go the faster away these galaxies um, recede and that brought the picture of the expanding universe. And at that point, Einstein threw his cosmological constant into the bin and called it the biggest blunder of his life. <clears throat> and was it? Well, now the story continues. Second part, the invention of quantum theory. Quantum theory um, says basically that um, um, certain things cannot stand still. Yeah? For example, if you have a field, a quantized field like electromagnetic fields, then there are field quanta, and there is a kind of a lowest energy state for these quanta. And that lowest energy state is not zero, but has a finite value. It's a tiny, tiny little 
thing. It, the analogy is when you look from far above over the ocean, it seems to be perfectly flat. But then when you go closer and closer, you see there are little waves. And if you go even closer, there's a big chaos going on on the microscopic level just above the surface. And that's a little bit how quantum field theory is. If you look really detailed at the very basic limit, then you see a sort of a fluctuating something, energy. And now the problem is that when you calculate how much energy is in stored in these little fluctuations and you sum over all the possible frequencies from the lowest to the very highest frequency, then you come that the energy density of this vacuum of empty space should be absolutely enormous. And that's what Murray Gell-Mann referred to. It's about 10 to the 118, the one with 118 zeros, times the entire mass of the universe, so or the, the mass density of the universe. The vast is some mistake in there. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> yes, but we would like to know where exactly the mistake is. And what because is this the... is the mystery which you have now. And now comes the third part of the mystery, which has to do with um, how the, uh, the universe actually behaves now. And it seems that it behaves a little bit um, like Einstein predicted with his cosmological constant. So he was right in the end. <laughs> well, a little bit, because finally the cosmological constant not only stabilizes in some sense the universe, but it even is a little bit bigger, so our universe starts to expand faster and faster. So it means that our universe not only is expanding from yeah. the Big Bang on forever, yeah. but this expansion is accelerating. Yeah, it seems that at the beginning it decelerated a little bit, and then after six, seven billion years, it started to speed up again. And has this been observed yes. experimentally? That has been observed because we were looking for um, candles in the universe, which are supernova, supernova are stars which explode at the end of their lifetime, and we know very well how bright these are. And by looking at them, we can then sort of judge how far away they are, and then we compare that with the redshift we observe, and that gives us an idea um, about the distance-time relationship. So and from that, we can really conclude that the universe is expanding faster. And that is ascribed to this um, famous dark energy, which seems to be the dominant form of energy in our universe. It makes up about, about 70% of the whole universe. And that is one of the, the observations which have been done. OK, so the correct answers to these quits, we would accept, first of all, dark energy, mm -hmm. but also cosmological constant right. or acceleration in the expansion of the universe. Mm -hmm. Are there experiments around the planet trying right. to study this phenomenon a little bit better? Yes, I mean, first of all, as I said, there is the optical observation with large telescopes, which you use in order to study distant objects, which give you some idea about what the history of the universe expanding is. And the second um, possibility is to study a kind of an echo of the Big Bang, which is the cosmic microwave background, which fills all our universe very uniformly with some kind of microwave radiation. And by studying very, very little fluctuations within this cosmic microwave background, you can, in fact, sort of conclude about the history of the universe, the very early history, and also about the influence of this dark energy.